Welcome to DOS Geek. Today we are going to be taking a look at a brand new browser that is based on Firefox. I didn't even think it was possible anymore for a company to actually come out and not base their browser on Chrome or Chromium. It, it just blew my mind that we have a big, awesome company that's an open source focused company that is actually basing a new browser off of something other than Chromium. So first of all, huge thanks to the team at Ghostry for focusing on a browser that already has a lot of their attention towards the privacy and security elements that we need on the internet. When you look at Google, they have so much control over 70% of the browser market by themselves. They have probably over 90% of the search engine traffic, if not more. And so it becomes so important that we not allow one company to basically have complete control over the internet. Now, before people were saying, oh, Chromium's open source. They're, they can do, they can't do anything to it, but that's not always true. For instance, Google has already removed the APIs for sync function, for contacts, geolocation, contact APIs, saying now, oh, it's a security issue. So they're removing that functionality. So other operating systems, other browsers that are based on this cannot tap into that. That's them starting to embrace or extend embrace extinguish process that we've known from another company. We're starting to see them start to do these type of things. They're basically making it very difficult for any other companies to compete with them from a browser standpoint. So when I see a product like Ghostry come out, it makes me excited. It makes me want to dig in. Now it's very important that I say this up front. This product is completely in beta. We are doing a beta preview of this product here. So there is so much work. They have a fantastic blog out there. They're talking about all the updates and things they're adding to it each and every week. So there's a lot of new stuff to come. What we're doing is a sneak peek behind the curtains to see what this team's working on. And I'm telling you, when you see what I see, you're going to be really excited about this work that they're doing. So let's take a look at Ghost Redawn. So I just want to spend the first few seconds explaining who Ghostry is in case you've not heard of them before. They have a very, very popular ad blocking extension. They're free and open source privacy and security extension and mobile browser application out there. They're owned now by a company, German company called Clicks, and they used to be owned by Evadon. Used to be owned by Evadon is very important because there are some critiques that happened while they're owned by Evadon. Again, every single browser out there, Firefox, this one, they all have any of the big browsers, let me say that, generally have some controversial thing that happens, but this is owned by a completely different company now. So I think it's important to note that. As far as history goes, one of the interesting things here is Ghostry is among the most popular browser extensions for privacy protection. In 2014, Edward Snowden suggested consumers use Ghostry along with other tools to protect their online privacy. That's a pretty big name there behind this particular extension. And again, being free and open source is really awesome. So now just a few seconds, you've learned about Ghostry. Let's go take a look at the actual browser and setup itself. So the first thing you're going to be greeted with is this nice clean intro. Welcome to Ghostry Dawn. Our browser protects your data and blocks bloatware so that you can surf privately and over two times faster than with Chrome. That is a big statement there. I have done some tests. It is very, very quick. So then you click set up my browser. If you already have an account with them, you can create an account. One of the interesting things, or you could skip this entirely. One of the interesting things about what they're planning to do here is Ghostry is a service that's free, but you can also pay $4.99 and get some more premium features. Also with this particular browser, the rumor is that they're either going to tack that onto the $4.99 extension. So if you pay that $4.99 a month or you can pay, I think it's like $3.99 a month if you do it for the year. Uh, so it's a paid for option. Now, a lot of us in the privacy realm, we talk about all of these companies in negative ways because they offer a free service and they're really not free. You got to follow the money trail and you find out, oh, they're selling my data. They're selling my information. So we kind of have to put our money where our mouth is. Are we willing to pay for a browser to support a company that's focusing on privacy security? For me, it's an easy answer. Heck yeah, I'm willing to pay for that. I use the internet 
all the time. The browser's my window into the internet. They're looking into a free version out there as well to leave it remain free. The idea behind that is they would have some type of ads or something based on the searches that you do is how they would make money. So very similar to DuckDuckGo, where DuckDuckGo is a great search engine where if you search for Kleenex, you might get an ad for Kleenex, but that's where it ends. They're not collecting your data and finding out how many times you search for Kleenex and putting an ID to you and fingerprinting you and all of that. They're just showing you an ad based on what you search with. That to me is totally fair. That's completely fair. I want these companies to do very well. I want them to make money. I just want to keep my privacy at the same time. So that's what Ghostry is looking at, those two options. And of course, you can give them feedback if you have one preference or another, or perhaps a different idea. But I like this model. This is okay with me. So in my case, I already have an account. So I'm going to click, I have an account and I'm going to log in here. You don't get to see this part because it's super secret. So once you sign in or skip that account creation, again, this is in beta. So if you want to go sign up for the beta, you can go do that now and give them your feedback and things and get started. You have a bunch of choices here. Very easy. Anybody can understand this. And if you can't, they also have these little informational blocks to kind of explain what these things do. So you can do recommended choices, which means do you want to block ads. Yes. What kind of trackers do you want to block? All ad and analytics trackers. Why not all trackers? Well, that can break some websites out there. Do you want to turn on anti-tracking? Yes. Do you want to turn on smart browsing? Yes. So you can see the recommended choices. That's all you have to do is click that. So if you're walking through your grandma or cousins or people who are maybe not super computer literate, you can just tell them, check that box right there. But I think anybody is capable of kind of understanding this. I really like the simplicity of the privacy choices right up front. Then they have their own search engine called Ghostry Glow, but you can also choose Start Page, Bing, Yahoo, or some of the other options out there like DuckDuckGo, OneSearch, all of these different options for you to choose from. While they do default to their own, I love that they still display the alternate choices. My only ask here was they would take these two choices off and put two more actual privacy focus choices up here on the page. But at least these top two are well known for being privacy based search engines. Finally, you can see here that I have the 499 plan. If you before I had the plan, I was still trying out this. I didn't have to sign up for anything. I was able to skip. Again, this is in beta. We don't know how they're going to go forward with their plans or whether everybody's going to have to sign up. There'll be a trial period if you have an, a free version that's ad uh, based. But this particular 499 a month plan, private search, tracker protection, speedy page loads, intelligence technology, ad free supports Ghostry's mission which that's important enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. And then we start browsing here. Now I wanted to stop on this page because this kind of gives you some idea of what their marketing, what their brand is behind this. Making privacy easy, demystifies online privacy by exposing the forces that lurk behind your screen, enabling you to block them, block ads, stop trackers, speed up websites. And then of course you take privacy at the device level. Stay connected with the peace of mind using Ghostry's powerful suite of advanced privacy protection tools. So they have a bunch of different tools that will give you analytics and information on what's happening with your privacy. And of course, you can access those tools by clicking this little ghost up here. And you can see we have a simple view of trackers block. This was obviously just installed. You can do trusted site, restrict sites. You can pause Ghostry if you're having issues with a particular site you need to get to and it's not allowing you. You can see the different services on, but I love how simplified they made these menus, right? Anybody can go in here and easily understand what these icons represent and be able to quickly make the privacy choices they want to for their browsing. Now, when we open a new tab, we kind of see how clean the search is here with Ghostry. This reminds me of back how Google used to be when they first started. That page was just super clean. And this is what you see here, very clean tab with just a search box in the middle where we can search for various things utilizing their particular search engine. Now under the hood here, if we take a look at this menu, we can see that we have an update already so we can restart to update. We have all of the same, very, very similar because again, this is based on Firefox. So if you've used Firefox recently, all of these menu options here from add-ons for extensions, which of course is gonna use the extension system that Mozilla Firefox utilizes. So anything you can get on Firefox, you can get here. For instance, if we're gonna need Bitwarden, right? The best privacy password manager out there. 
And if you didn't believe me, I bet you believe me now after all the news on LastPass recently. By the way, go to bitwarden.com slash DLN. Get your $10 a year premium account with Bitwarden. They are the best password manager on the planet. But there you go. You've got Bitwarden. You can get your extensions just like you're used to. Any of the extensions you want, change themes, plugins, all of those type of things all can be done within here. Now, personally, I really like the colors that they used here. It seems very modern, very current. It's fun. And if we do a search like on Destination Linux, one of the greatest Linux podcasts on the planet, you can see how your searches look here. You got Ghostery Glow Beta, which Glow is what they're calling their search engine portion. You've got this kind of, I don't know how to explain this colors, these degrees of neon that basically kind of fade in and out, but look really modern, very clean. And of course, you don't like that. You can go change that. And maybe you're not ready to install the browser yet, but if you want to use their search engine, you could just go to ghostresearch.com and be able to check out their search engine and see if it's something that you enjoy. And again, if you're paying that $4.99 price, you're going to have no ads. If you're not paying that, you're probably going to see ads based on what you search. But again, not tracking you, not storing your information. So one of the claims that Ghostry makes is that they have more privacy and protection enabled by default than Firefox. So I have a brand new install of Firefox right here and we have Ghostry over here. So we're gonna go into the preferences and we're gonna take a look at the default options and the differences here. So we're under privacy and security. I'm gonna go under privacy security here. You can see again, they're based on each other. So very, very similar. Now you can see here on Ghostry, cookies and site data, clear data and manage data way at the top where that's not at the top up here. We have the manage exceptions, enhanced tracking protection tool. We have logins and password autofills automatically set up. That's the same here. And use a primary password is both unchecked in these. We have both of them remembering your history by default, but this does not suggest on top sites. And then over here we have our location data and our settings. We can see both have block pop-ups, warn you when websites try to install add-ons. Under security though, you can see that this goes immediately to security where this has Firefox data collection and use section set up here. So Firefox automatically defaults to allow Firefox to send technical and interaction data to Mozilla, allow Firefox to make personalized extension recommendations, and allow Firefox to run and install studies. Those are automatically turned on on a brand new install of Firefox. Those are not turned on over here in Ghostry. This is one of my big frustrations with Firefox. I understand companies need data, especially if they're ever going to compete against the likes of Google and others. But I think there are just better ways. There are services that you can sell, which is the concept that this company is using, which I'm much, much more behind. And then when you look at the rest of the security stuff, very, very similar, except don't enable HTTPS only mode, whereas here in Ghostry, that is enabled by default. So you can see they're sticking to what they say. This is actually more privacy and security focused by default than your standard Firefox installation. Now, I love Firefox. This isn't putting down Firefox. I want Firefox or Ghostry both to be hugely successful, but I just wanted to show you that Ghostry here, based on these initial settings, are at least implementing what they're saying they're implementing. Now, if we go into our add-ons here, which they're both again utilizing Mozilla here, but your theming is going to be different. So if we go under themes, you can see here that we have this default theme. We have a dark theme that we can utilize and the we have basically four themes installed and then some recommended themes and we can get more. If we go to Ghostery Dawn and do the same thing here, again, this is in beta, so they may add more and we go into add-ons and then we go into themes. We have two options here. You have this dark theme, which is enabled by default. And then we have this more bright bluish kind of theme, which goes with more of the colors that you see typically throughout the search engine and other things. I prefer the dark mode, but that's a personal preference. But I like that you at least have two choices here and that they've created their own themes. Okay, so you've taken a look at Ghostery Dawn, the beta. I'd love to see your feedback in the comments below. What are some of the things you like? What are some of the things you want to see them change? When I look at this browser overall, I'm very excited about the path they're going on. I do think they're going to have difficulty if they don't get a free version in place. I suspect they will get a free version that's ad supported in place. 
but I know the idea is to get people to start paying for these services that they think are free, but are really costing them their data. And really this is a good value here. And if you go up to the premium plan it includes things like a VPN, which makes it an even better value. For me, the important thing is that Ghostry continues to prove itself as a privacy and security focused company. We don't find anything out as people are digging through the open source code or there are elements that are not open source that are left closed source so that we can't see into them to see if things are actually doing what they say they're doing. It also needs a much cleaner installer for the Linux world. So to get this to run again, it's in beta. So this is not a critique yet, but what I'd like to see is a cleaner installer so that I'm not having to go into the terminal and do the dot slash to launch it. Uh, I want something that just installs very cleanly, easily, that's incorporated into a lot of the Linux repositories. I have tried it on Mac OS and Windows. It does have a clean installer for both of those. So again, I think they're gonna get a lot of push, much like Firefox had from the privacy and security focused Linux community. So I think it's important that they spend uh, some of their time developing that piece out. And I expect that they will actually do that, which is really exciting. So let me know again in the comments, what do you think of Ghostery? Are you gonna go check it out? Are you gonna go sign up for the beta? You better, you better go check it out. Let me know what you think. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching this video.